Folks, this stretch of gravel right here lies right under the noses of most Aussies. We're talking over a thousand kilometres of pristine waterholes, empty campsites and epic mountain views. This is one of Australia's best and hidden road trips. The ironic part is it actually links two of Australia's busiest cities. When you see this trip, I guarantee you, you're going to want to put it on your bucket list. Welcome back to Off Grid. On the last leg of our journey, we took our first steps into New South Wales via the Darling River region. But our end destination for this trip is Queensland. And that means pushing north through the heart of New South Wales and the most densely populated region in Australia. The mega cities of Sydney and Brisbane are linked by a 790 kilometre traffic jam filled multi-lane nightmare, the mighty Pacific Highway. But I found a much better way north. And if I can pull it off, we'll do the entire trip to Queensland without touching the blacktop. Our journey begins inland of Sydney at a glorious country pub at Moonan Flat. From here, we're gonna be following our noses through the back country of the Great Dividing Range, a region jammed packed full of off-grid adventure. In the morning, we set out with the Jawas and prepare to say goodbye to the blacktop for what I hope is a long time to come. I've been waiting to do this trip for quite some time and it's a trip right under everyone's noses. And I think that is what is making it so appealing to me. I'm absolutely bloody frothing on this. This is gonna be fantastic. Folks, I can't talk fast enough in here. I am having a time of my life and we are morning one of day one. Mate, if there's one thing you can do, it is talk, <laughs> but I'm excited too. We have got eight days of nothing but dusty gravel and pristine rivers to wash it off on. I reckon we just get stuck into this. There's a thousand k's of dirt roads and tracks to nose down between us and our destination. And whether we can link them all up and get the vans through is, well, it's anyone's guess. For now, our first goal is to make it to a secret camp north of Gloucester, where I've lined up a mate to help us try to catch a fish that I've been chasing for bloody years. And to get there, we're gonna go through the glorious Barrington Tops. 800 metres above sea level currently. Barrington Tops has always kind of been referred to as like the high country of New South Wales, and for good reason too, the, the highest peak out here is over 1,500 metres. And to give you a bit of an idea of weather conditions, the coldest ever recorded temp up here in the Tops, in Barrington Tops, was a staggering minus 17 degrees. Minus 17, that is brass monkey weather. Another fun fact, Shauno, my good mate Shauno, he owns probably the most famous four-wheel drive in modern four-wheel drive history, that being Sooty. I think it was actually this stretch of road right here. This is where I first met Sooty, and it was the first time we ever took Sooty off-road, was up here in the Barrington Tops. Hey, hey Steve, who's that behind me, mate? Can you see another car? Yeah, it's a Silver 80. Hey, boys, how are ya? That's Jono, and I'm right behind you. I'm in that 80 that you're talking about. Mate, welcome to the new rig, how about this? I've been. Steph and Harley must be channeling their inner Toyota today, because the steep climb up to the tops, they're having some dramas. We are just overheating, sorry, fellas. Well, it is half past nine on the first morning of the new trip. The alarms in the old D-Max just started going off. We we're already overheating. Might be a slow trip. We were just putting up, up the side of a hill here, not getting much airflow. So if this is gonna be a battle for the trip, we might be stopping every uh, 20 minutes just to let the old girl cool down. This is Stefan Harley's first time towing in the D-Max in proper hilly terrain. And if we're gonna keep this up, we might need to look at fitting a larger radiator. For now, we're up into cooler air, 1,300 metres, and soon we're into the deep forests at the summit. Wait, wait for me. Really interesting fact about the Barrington Tops region is because of its altitude and the weather conditions and the fog, it's actually home to a staggering number of aircraft crashes. One article way back in the day actually named the Barrington Tops the Devil's Triangle. Based on the dangerous nature of flying over the top of the tops in inclement weather. Nowadays, we've got far about sophisticated radars and weather reports, etc., etc. But you know, the last crash was like not that long ago. 
was like 1987, the last aircraft crash came out of here, and it date, they date right back, you know, there's seven or eight of them. And the, uh, the remains are all scattered through here. In fact, one of the hills out here is actually named Aeroplane Hill after an aeroplane crashed into it. So it's kind of crazy. Devil's Triangle. Gnarly name. Back in the day, the Barrington Tops used to offer some pretty tough wheeling, but now it's more of a touring destination with four wheel drive trails and back roads as high as any in the Vic High Country. Now, <laughs> there's one big landmark in the area that for some reason doesn't appear on any of the tourist brochures. But this one is not to be missed. What have you got in store for us here, Gaz? A bit of a standout in the old Barringtons. It's a, it's a spot you can't not stop at. I think you'll be quietly impressed. Okay. Harley will probably just be nonchalant. I don't think there'll be much to impress him. As for me, I'm going to be deeply humbled, I reckon. Deeply humbled? Yeah, I might, I might not have much to say, to be honest. I feel like I know where you're leading us now. I don't. <laughs> I'm excited. I've just picked up on you're, what's going on. You're not the only one excited. <laughs> Oh. Now that is a fantastic geological formation. <laughs> that is just, holy heck. Well, I can see why you're deeply humbled. Jeepers yeah. creepers. I, I mean, I was expecting, I was expecting big things, but I've seen the big galah, the big banana, the big pineapple, the big koala. And now? That is geology, my friend. How's that top like tip bit not falling off? I've, I've wondered that myself many a time. of us can only hope to come across something such as this. What we have here is a fantastic example of a large granite knob. Now, I'll leave it up to your imagination as to what that looks like to you, but to me, that right there is one huge mushroom. Looks fantastic. When the man says he's, he's excited, The old Barrington Tops area has got so many different lookouts. This one here is an absolute cracker. Heap of campsites nestled right all through here. There's some that are quite large. You can have old groups in there. There's ones you'd have just for yourself. For us, however, I have got something very, very special planned. And it's not in the Barrington Tops. We're going to go all the way down to the other side. So we better get these two. We're probably trying to get a romantic selfie on the edge of the cliff. And get going. Romantic photos. It's got to be done. It's part of my job. Take photos of those two. I better get an invite to the wedding. Mate, I took a hundred photos of you earlier. <laughs> Take a photo, a photo of me with the rock. Well, that was I a special a occasion. A big... <laughs> Not Especially like you. Come on, at home in the comments down below, tell me you wouldn't have had your photo taken <laughs> with the granite knob. You would. I know you would have. <laughs> when you've travelled as long as we have in the off-grid crew, there's one thing you've got to be aware of, and it gets more creative the longer you're on the road. I'm gonna try sneak into the back of Gaz's car and scare him. Get down right behind the seat in here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, yes, oh. <laughs> oh my god. No, no, well done. I just need to get out and empty my pants. <laughs> there you go, folks. You just gotta watch your back at all times. Keep an eye on your enemies. I'm gonna be going like that every time I get in the vehicle now. Is she gone? Yeah, she's gone. Holy. As I mentioned earlier, the rivers around here are home to a fish I've always wanted to hook. And the next objective is to link up with a mate who reckons he can help me bag one. My mission, oh man, it's got to happen this time. I've never caught an Australian bass. Freshwater fish, fantastic fighting fish, and it's found in the most pristine waterways. To get my date with a bass, we've got to leave the Barrington Tops and follow some backtracks to a secret squirrel campsite on the river northeast of Gloucester. Now, I know it looks like we've just turned off the road and are driving through a cow paddock, which look, technically we are, but trust me, I've got a little surprise at the end of this for you. Yeah, look, it's hard to uh, hide that one, mate. We are legitimately in the middle of a farm. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, according to my sources, when I say my sources, a mate of mine, just at the end of this little goat track, which isn't a goat track, it's actually a cow paddock, is a river. And in that river, well, hopefully, 
we're gonna get a bass. Mate, uh, given your fishing track record, I think uh, we might have to hold up a bit of the weight here. And also, lucky, I bought my good luck fishing hat. It's, yeah. been, it's been done once before. I might take out the biggest fish again. Waiting for us by the river is our bass whisperer. Someone you might better know as the author of many a four-wheel drive meme. Here he is, the man, the myth, the legend. Hello, mate. How are you, brother? Good to finally meet you. To the folks at home, this is Blair, otherwise known as, AKA. Cowboy Tune. Cowboy Tune. You all need, well. Or idiot. Idiot, well, idiot works too. Won't be an idiot though if you put us onto a bass. The Manning River, full of bass and full of four-wheel drive memes. Hopefully I don't become one. Yeah. We'll in see. the next few days, we'll see. Just behave yourself. <laughs> Let's go and have a look at this. When it comes to fishing, you always sort of hear those big names, you know, barramundi, marlin, all those kind of things, as being dream fish. But for myself, a fish that I've tried so many times to tick off the list is the Australian bass. I've gone all over the right waterways, in canoes, in boats, on the bank, I've slept on the banks, zero. Absolutely nothing. So, today is my day. That's a lot of pressure. Let's give it a go. Now that he's talked it up, we're in big trouble, I think. <laughs> we'll give it a go. So, if it doesn't happen, it's all your fault. I'm not wearing undies too, by the way. Lucky you're uh, at the front of the boat. Or unlucky, depending on how you look at it. Well, this is nice. Love this for me. Bit of gondola vibes on the Man River. La -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. So I'm told that the lucky number for a bass is 50, 50 centimetres. That's the goal, aim high, aim big. Now, Blair's told us that the bass like to hide in the shade of the structure along the bank. Luckily, We've got a couple of salty sea dogs along with us for the ride. How you going there, Doc? It's now a bad time to tell you that I'm not very good at steering. I'm noticing that. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Wait. I've got a bit going on back here. I've got to admit it, a common excuse on this channel when the fish aren't biting is to blame the time pressures of filming. But we're putting everything into this today and several hours have soon passed on the water. Could be a long day. They're on smoko. How many have you caught? Three. Three? Yeah. How many you got? Seven. So, oh, you got seven? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look forward to the pictures. Yep. After what feels like literally a thousand casts, I'm about ready to call it for the day. But as the clouds burn off, suddenly Blair Ooh. is on. We've done it. No, we haven't. Not yet. We've, we've hooked a bass. They exist. Stop talking, oh, we haven't got any of these boats. Jeez, they fight. Ooh, this is a good fish. Look at the size of that! Now would have been a good time to have the net. Jeez, this, you... this might be a PB. Are you kidding me? Look at the size of that thing. Get in the boat. Look at the size of that. That is an absolute stonker. So that is a bass. They do exist. Thank God for that. Look at it. 42, ce <laughs> 42 centimetre bass. Beautiful looking fish. Okay, they exist. Bass do exist. Despite three million casts. Oh, that's how it happens sometimes. Yep, that's true. Well, we have worked our butts off for that one fish. Some days they're on, some days they're not. We're lucky to get that one. 42 centimetres of Australian prime bass. Well done, man. Let him go? Yeah, let him go. See you later, brother. Now, my lure's just here, bud. Just, if you can come back here. <laughs> Well, the old saying rings true here that a bad day's fishing beats a good day at work any time. Bass still eludes me. I just, I don't get it. I don't understand what I've got to do. A 42 back here, I got nothing to say. That was fantastic just to see it. Now, what I am good at, and you've seen me do it in the past, that some might say I'm an expert, is crack a beer and set up camp. Camp is right there. It's gonna be a cracker of a night. And if the consolation prize is cracking a beer and sitting around the fire, we're all winners. I'll see you back on the bank. One last oh, cast. Just joking. Oh, heart attack. New South Wales Highlands offer some pretty lush camping, and this spot, well, it is no exception. We've got almost the entire valley to ourselves, and it's hard to imagine Australia's busiest communities are less than two hours away. Well, how's that 
for a first night's camp. You know, your first night's camp sometimes you can be forgiven for, you know, just getting a few Ks under your belt, just stopping by the side of the freeway and just getting it done. But that right there is champagne camping. And the good news is that is night one of, I don't care really, eight, nine, 10, who cares? How do you make a good day even better? Well, I'm holding half of it, but the other half, I'm gonna show you a little technique that I found by chance that includes three ingredients and one special ingredient. You can get them anywhere and it just, just wait. I reckon all of you at home are gonna to wanna to try this, but for now, you know I like doing this. You'll excuse me, I'm gonna be a bit rude. I'm gonna turn my back on you and just suck it all in for a bit. Rightio. Fish and chips, easy to do. Everyone's got their own fish and chip recipe. I'm gonna share with you two little techniques that I use. First and foremost, traditionally with chips, and you've seen it in fish and chip shops, you chuck your potatoes or your chips into stinking hot oil, and they do that. It's all quite exciting. What I'm doing here is putting them into freezing cold oil and then bringing the oil up to the boil with the chips in there. Mate of mine, Harry taught me this technique, and it is, in my humble opinion, the only way to cook chips. Fish is gonna be super simple tonight. We're gonna to do a batter. Stick with me here. It needs three types of flour. Rice flour. I didn't even know you could get flour out of rice, but you can. Struth, <coughs> rice flour. Gets a bit weird here. Tapioca flour. I don't even know what a tapioca is, but you can get flour out of them. And then you're also gonna need this stuff here, which is super weird. Glutinous rice flour. Three types of flour and a fourth mystery ingredient, which I'll get to in a minute. I've thrown beer batter out the window. Don't bother it anymore, I use this. It's far lighter, so it's great for, you know, that really delicate fish like King George Whiting or tonight we've got, uh, we've got kingfish tonight. It's a great batter for that. Just chuck them in. That's rice flour, equal quantities of tapioca flour and equal quantities of gluttonous rice flour. Now, come with me, secret ingredient. Rightio, in here somewhere, there it is. I knew I'd put it somewhere easy. Soda water. This is the substitute for what you'd normally use in a beer batter, but it is far lighter. Remember I said light for those delicate flavors? So we'll just add a bit. That's the consistency you're looking for. See how it's kinda, kinda watery? The old chippies, holy. I've cooked a mountain of chips here. Oh, heckin' balls. Look, there's a lot of bugs over here. We need to get cooking. And here comes the fun part. We're going into the batter with the fish in the oil. Listen to that. That's the sound you wanna hear. I reckon that might just, ooh, crikey, the bugs. They're attack, ooh, ooh. Someone is eating bugs tonight. Just gonna add, oh, geez, the bugs. Pepper, you gotta go quick, cause otherwise you're gonna be eating a lot of bugs. Ooh, lids come off. Oh, bug, where'd that come from? <whistles> come on in. Holy, dude. Oh. Have a go at some of this here. Oh, just have a little, have a little, just have a nibble. Just be, oh. the, be the little taste tester for us. It's hot, man, what are you doing? Oh, what was that crying? <laughs> How is it? How's the taste? That is delicious. Yeah, There's it some is. crunch in there though. Don't worry about the, don't worry about the crunch. That's the, the extra batter. protein. That's the batter, man. Oh, that's good gear, actually. Have another piece there. Get yeah, it in here. Oh, oh. crikey. Yeah, don't worry about him. He's good. Don't worry. Give me. <laughs> you made a lot of friends more. over here. So that batter, as you can see, super light. Doesn't impart any flavour. Yep. But it gives a certain type of crispiness with also like that chewy type feel. Yeah. Which is it's very different. Big shout out to Az for the fish too. That's good. Oh, fish. that's that's um. Thanks, Az. Yeah, that's uh, Newcastle Kingy. Yeah. Az, thanks very much, mate. I reckon we take this down by the fire. Yep. A couple more brewskis. I'm having a wine at the moment, as you can probably tell. Yep. Let's get stuck <laughs> in. It's been about as good a first day as you could possibly ask for. And tomorrow looks even better as we uncover a couple more hidden gems in the backcountry. Life on the road in the Jawa van never gets old. And with the luxury of power on tap, hot water and gas, and even bathrooms on board, home literally is where you park it. Woo, fire's already cranking, it's 6 a.m. Doing the coffee rounds for everyone? That's it, domestic god. What a guy. We're taking the chance at one more crack on the water before we push off. And well, <laughs> I just don't want to talk about it. I don't even want to catch a bass, I'm not even interested. I don't even like fishing. You know, not at the moment anyway. Now, what I do like is having a route planned for the day. And Blair has given us a few tips on how to continue north while avoiding the bitumen. And you can continue on through there on the dirt and pop out on the Oxley Highway. How we cross the Oxley Highway, however, 
Without touching the blacktop? Without touching the blacktop. I'm yes. thinking a jump. We'll need an up ramp and a down ramp on either side of the Oxy Highway. We might not even make that today, and I don't care. If we find a campsite up here somewhere... It's us. The second part of van life I'm loving is the pack-up. In just a few minutes, camp is squared away, and we are ready to push on. Let's hit the gravel road. Cheers, mate. Take care. I will be back. I'm not done with Bass 101. <laughs> Taking the gravel might mean some extra Ks and winding back roads, but it also uncovers some incredible areas that you'd usually just blast right by. And this one is no exception. Tappan Tops. For those playing along at home, that currently puts us inland of Taree on the coast. It might be summer in New South Wales, but you wouldn't think it. That sound isn't just thunder clapping from the clouds. It's bloody hail. It's 30 degrees outside. It is so steamy and muggy and humid and all the fun things. Well, reasonably dry in here. It's not down the back there. I hear the old uh, D-Max is having some overheating problems. It's actually quite steep. We've got from, according to the map, a long way to go to get to the top yet, so. I'll let the kids uh, cool on down back there. See yous. It's just a glorious day to pull up on the side of the road. It's a great day for it, actually. Enjoy all that sunny New South Wales has to offer. Well, everything's just cleared up. The sun is back out, and you wouldn't know that 30 seconds ago, torrential downpour. Happens about this time every day. You could almost set your watch to it. Thunderstorms in the afternoon, sun straight after. Look at that, it's you have to put sunscreen on now. 30 seconds ago, my headlights came on. <laughs> and you can look across at the, uh, the valleys on the other side, and they're all covered in mist. It's all rising up through the valleys. The place is crazy. Daily rain showers do come with one advantage, and that's keeping the local rivers and streams flowing fresh. And we've stumbled entirely by chance on a pretty special swimming hole deep in the forest. Well, this is what it's all about driving along just a few minutes ago and I saw a nondescript little marking on the map that said X Falls. I'm not going to tell you the name of the falls because I think it's important that you folks have a bit of a look and a search for yourselves. And it looks like this is one of those spots that very, very few people ever come down to. Supposedly, 600 metres or so up here is a swimming hole. Never heard of it before in my life, never been here before. And look at the size. This track is, yeah, hasn't been used much, so I don't think too many people have. But this is what getting off grid is all about. Follow the old man, hasn't led us astray yet. Sometimes a place looks better in photos than in real life. Look at that. But this is not one of them. One thing it doesn't look, as spectacular as it is, it doesn't look warm. These people here seem not to care. Quit your excuses and get your top off. All right. <laughs> I like it when you talk, Marty. <laughs> woo! 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 Have a look at that. That is spectacular. Look at that. That was That's so nice, hey, that is beautiful. Oh, heavenly. Well, I'm not even gonna try and be all manly and make excuses. Freaking hate cold water, always have. But, you get yourself down to locations like this and you can't help but absolutely love it. Look at that. I doubt many people even know this exists, let alone taking the icy plunge. Backyard adventures, folks, backyard adventures. I'm getting out of this water if you don't mind. Just thinking as I drive along here and look out over the view that it's these adventures that are so close to home that we so often overlook. I mean, the trip we're doing right now, I'd hazard a guess that on any given day, hundreds of thousands of people travel between Sydney, Newcastle region, Brisbane, up and down the motorway, and wouldn't even consider putting together a package on a holiday just to step inland from their own home for a bit and go and have an explore. And I know why. We always put the big bucket list items up there, right on top. They're the ones we're trying to get to. 
they're the ones we're saving up for. And I get it for very good reason. They're bucket list items because they're spectacular. They're out of the way. They're not close to home. This trip, not that remote. But heck, you may as well be because there's no one out here. And it's stunning. Folks, check your backyard. You might just be living on the edge of adventure. Sticking to the gravel has been working so far. Although we've had a few close encounters along the way. Oh, we've got 35 metres of bitumen here. Oh, I reckon you can scoot around it there on the left. You can dodge that. <laughs> There's quite a drop off on the left. Don't touch Don't the Don't touch it. Oh, he's missed it. He's just he's done it. it. Perfectly planned, mate. Perfectly planned. There you go. There's the pitcherman just there. <laughs> Sticking to the rules. Sticking to the rules. But as we draw level with the town of Warhope, there's a real roadblock to our plans. North of us lies the Hastings River, which only offers a few places to cross, and more importantly, an old highway that runs right across our path. It's our first real challenge of the trip in so much as that the Oxley Highway cuts directly across our path. Somehow, we've got to get across that. Keeping me up at night. I'm gonna see if we can't find a way to get across it without touching it. But if we can't, you might just have to give us that one little bit of leeway. We might just have to cross a highway. That's not technically driving up it though, is it? See how we go. Despite a few hours scouring the maps, I simply can't find a way to avoid an ever so brief touch of the bitumen. But I did at least find <laughs> a cool way to do it. Mate, this road looks pretty black toppish to me. Yeah, look, it's virtually impossible to not at least put a bit of a tire on the blacktop, you'll have to agree. It's only a couple of hundred metres. I think you've, you, you've got to be able to forgive me. Look, I do forgive you because this bridge and this scenery is pretty bloody spectacular. So a little bit of blacktop and then back onto the dirt road. Oh yeah, yeah, this only goes for, you can almost see that, yeah, yeah, the gravel's up the top here. For those following along at home, roughly speaking, if you were charging your way up the freeway right now, we are more or less in line with Port Macquarie. We've got a long way to go down through here because we're going to come down to one of my favourite waterholes. I've only ever been down to this one here once in the past and it was when we were getting ready way back in the day to launch this very channel that you're watching right now. We came down here and spent the night. Also, coming up, a couple of things to look forward to. We're going to be visiting way up high, way above a thousand metres above sea level, an abandoned old mine. From there, there's a lookout that no one's heard of. I guarantee you, you won't have heard of this lookout and it has a vertical drop of over a thousand metres from the top of the lookout to the bottom. That's all to come. This right here is the Wilson River in Belangary State Forest. It's got a few great camping options and another awesome swimming hole. But our cameraman has done what camera guys do and pushed us to get a few more Ks knocked out for the day. A plan that soon hits problems. Copy, abort, abort, abort. Right on sunset, we hit a fully closed road, which means a detour of a few hours and no chance of making camp that I'd got pinned. Oh, it sucks to be you right now. We've got a bit of a stitch up here. The boys have taken us down some track. It's a middle bloody nowhere. We're on a one-way road. Gonna have to do a 30-point bloody turn. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, heck. Oh, heck. Oh, yeah, got it. <laughs> what? Have you done it? That was a bit off roading. <laughs> Wait, what the heck? Love your work. Well, we're out. I don't know. I don't reckon them other boys are getting out. I think we just got to go for it because that's. It's quite incredible what you can turn around in. Now, on this show, we pride ourselves on tracking down the best campsites in Australia. But tonight, well, all I've got to show you is a gravel pit. How hey. spectacular. <laughs> this would have to be, and I'm not joking, the nicest gravel pit I've stayed in. There's nowhere else I'd want to be. Well, I can think of a couple <laughs> of places. Well, things don't always go to plan. The camp we're trying to get to, trust me, is going to blow your mind. It's going to blow all our minds. And sometimes, folks, when you're on the road and off grid, you've just got to be a little bit flexible and have an open mind. Just like yoga. Namaste. Ah, 
After a few backtracks and some false starts, the mission is back on as we barrel towards another hidden gem location, which once again slips off the radar of many travellers. Just crossed a bridge almost at sea level. When we finish this afternoon, we'll be at 1,200 metres above. We're perfectly in line with Kempsey. Kempsey's about halfway between Sydney and Brisbane, so we are right on that halfway point. Little fact for you, the town of Kempsey back in the day was the birthplace of the Akubra hat. A lot of Australia's history is hidden away in far-flung corners of the bush. And in the case of our next destination, staying hidden was exactly what the locals wanted. Nearly a thousand metres above sea level, and there's a little spot up here I want to stop that back in the day, the merest hint that there might be flatlanders coming up to visit would send men scurrying, running into the bush. <laughs> I'll explain exactly why in just a second. There's a few remains of the logging history that shaped these mountains in the last century, but the best example is here at the abandoned logging town of Kookaburra. Now, admittedly, not a lot left. You've got to use your imagination just a little bit, but let's consider a couple of facts here. 1946, the little town of Kookaburra opened up and it was a bit of a sawmill out here, obviously, extracting local timbers. We're at over a thousand metres above sea level, a very long way, even by today's standards, from the local town of Kempsey. They had to make do out here, that little tiny general store, they had some chooks running around, vegetable patches. It's about 80 people living out here. What I love about the history was, a lot of people working up here were trying to escape family maintenance and there were a bunch of rogues and scallions that would run off into the bush whenever the police came. Different time, folks, a very different time. The little town of Kookaburra, I'm gonna raise a beer to you tonight, to the scallions and rogues of Kookaburra. Ooh. Of course Bro. you would find the, uh, the beer can. Definitely the old mate's just knocked off, go and turn this off for the last time and I'll just leave this one here. Abandoned ghost towns are well and good to visit, but maybe not to camp in. So we're pushing on to a spot further into the range. We've got a campsite just up here. It's a bit different to what we're used to. In fact, it's very different to what we're used to, but I think it's gonna be cool. And I reckon we pull into camp, get a fire going, crack a beer in what is, yeah, it's a little bit different. I think we get in, mate. I've got a bit of a treat in store for you. Steph and I are going to whip something up delicious tonight. So, yeah, let's get in, get a brewski and uh, kick back. Well, if you'd like to uh, turn your heads to the left. <laughs> Have a go at that. Tonight's accommodation. Now, I can hear some of you asking, why the heck have we camped out the back of someone's house? But I can assure you, this is not what it looks like. This whole structure here is called the Daisy Plains Huts. It's actually managed by New South Wales National Parks and it was put in here back in the day for park workers. There's a bit of a home base because of course town, conservatively, depending on conditions, is about a three to four hour drive. So if you're based up here for a week, going back into town wasn't gonna work. So these huts were put up here. We've got a kitchen hut just here. There's a bit of a bathroom hut over here and room for about six or eight people in these little accommodation things here. With the advent of cheaper camping gear, you know, cheaper swags and rooftop tents and all that kind of thing these days, it looks to me like they don't get used that much. But what's fantastic, there's virtually no vandalism here. There's no rubbish. As you can see, they're in good repair. And I really like to see that. Now, kids are cooking tonight. That means I got a night off. You know what a night off means? Oh, it's quarter past five, I'm late. I'm late. Yeah, mate, if you just come back about half a metre there. Okay, coming. Yep, that'll do ya. Tonight's camp also puts us within striking distance of a lookout I've been told we just can't miss. And from here, we can unhook the Jawas and go and check it out. But that's for tomorrow. Well, the eagle-eyed amongst you will definitely have seen the front bar on the D-Max is looking completely different to how it was six weeks ago. We've given this thing an absolute pizzling through the bush. Scratches all down the side, a bit of rock rash. Was looking pretty how you're going. So what we've gone and done is given it a once over with Raptor. And look, to be honest, she looks like a brand new bar. What I really like about it, it's tough of course, but if we do manage to, you know, put it up against a bank, scratch the sides, literally grab yourself a rattle can, hit it again, and she'll come up looking brand new. She's tough, she's durable, quick to touch up. I reckon we are ready for another 12 months of off-grid. We'll see how it looks at the end, 2024. 
out of this. <laughs> Wine cellar. So, Chefany, we've... Uh... Chefany, I like Chefany. that. <laughs> that one in uh, we've had a couple of big days on the track, we so have. tonight I'm thinking we go go a bit wholesome. Bit of a fan favourite pasta. Not just pasta, the Harley Orchard special. Little trick later though that we're going to try. Definitely original. May never been done. May also not work. We'll see. It's it's 100 percent going to work. But okay. first, uh, look, we've got a bit of prep to do. Let's cut some stuff up. We'll get the sauce going. We've got a bit of salami, bacon, onion, capsicum, pesto, crushed tomato. It comes out. Now the key to this pasta is. It is actually quite an oily boy. You think you've got the bacon, salami, we've got pesto, a lot of oil. So key is to actually fry off your bacon and your salami first. I've already got the bacon over here in the paper towel. Get a bit of that oil out, drain it out, and then go to your next step. It looks interesting, but it smells so good. <laughs> yeah, look, the colour of it is not great, but... It doesn't matter about colour. It will get there, my friend. Right, so obviously no pasta dish is complete without garlic bread. So we've whipped up some butter, parsley, garlic, mush that all together. And then we've got these beautiful baguettes and we're gonna slice them up, whack in the garlic butter and then, Orch, talk to me. What's the next steps for this ominous garlic bread? Well, mate, obviously we've got the, uh, the big old jawa here. We don't have an oven in here, but what I'm thinking is we're gonna make one. Hey. Now, I've never tried this before and we'll see how we go, but the theory is, I have an oven tray and a foil tray. I want to get that above one of the grills there, prop it up on maybe a couple of cans. We'll wrap the uh, the original baking tray with the, the foil aluminium tray. one. Yep, yep, yep. And see whether we can just create that oven effect. That feels like it's warming up nicely. Oh yeah, that's getting some heat in it. Look at that. Well done. And away we go. All right, let's get the water on. All right, Harley, this is it. Oh, mate, I am actually nervous about this one. This is the first time we've taken a bit of risk. What I am going to do, let's get our faithful leader in. Ooh. Gaz, man, Ooh, come shivers, over. That's me. I'll get you to do the reveal. You saw it. It went on at the same time as the pasta. The pasta's just finished. Copy. Lots of room so, to experiment back here on this yes. stove. I don't want to know what you two have been doing back here, but let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's yeah. open her up. Have yeah. you looked? Have you looked in here? Do you know no, the answer? No, no, no idea. This could this be charcoal or could be. Here a we go. Here we go. You, even you two Steam can't see buns. it. We're going to see it. Or not. Oh, hey, they're in things. <laughs> <laughs> Trick jar. Unwrap him. Oh, bro, oh. <laughs> That's actually that worked. is that is oh that is perfect. <laughs> Honestly, Look at that. there you go, folks. You can make an oven on your stove. That I one. am legit impressed. I didn't think. I thought there'd be a burnt base. Yep. Sweet. We need right, to well, do I'm, I'm just going to go like Dig that in. Yeah. and just try one because, you know, oh, it's hot. Mm. Mm. I'm just like a mama makes. <laughs> <laughs> that is, honestly, Perfect. win. Yeah, like so up. good. Well, well, we better plate up so you yep. can have your garlic bread as a sword with your pasta. This trip, I've got to tell you, has been a real eye-opener for me so far. And it's not just because I'm finally travelling with mates that can actually oh. cook. What are we, uh... 18 months into off-grid now, we are. Yeah. roughly speaking, thereabouts. This trip was the one I was the most concerned wouldn't tick my boxes. However, it's the one I reckon I'm going to put in my top five of the last 18 months. Wow. wow. That's a pretty big call. That's a huge call. Who would have thought? I like it. Let's go three hours this way, Yeah. only because of the hills, and we're back in massive suburbia. Yeah. Highways, humanity, and we have been for the last, what, three or four, five days? Yep. Seen, what, two cars? Yep. If that, three yeah. cars, yeah. if that. We've had water holes, views, campsites, bass. Yep. Not me. Uh, <laughs> not, any. not any of us. And we're halfway there. We're, we're, it's, we're, just, we're just under 600 k's now. Yeah. Yep. We're halfway to Brisbane. What I've got planned for the next slot makes... Anyway, this is the meal and the campsite of the trip so far. Folks, you've done yourself an absolute bloody winner. A bit of summer rain rolled through last night, but it'll take more than a few showers to dampen the mood. I've been tweaking my setup every trip since we started off-grid in 2022, and the latest addition is one I'm super proud of. Don't know about you folks, but I reckon that just looks incredible. That right there is the brand new Razzler Hooped Bar for the Y62, and I think I'm the first person in Australia to have one on their four-wheel drive. 
just looks incredible if you ask me. You know what, this whole setup, the whole thing, is something of a dream come true. The 62, we've made a couple of tweaks to it, a couple more to make, but right now, I simply couldn't be happier with it. It is just a dream rig. The last 18 months, I reckon I've seen more of Australia in the last 18 months than I have in 10 years. Everyone thinks that towing a van behind your four-wheel drive is gonna impede you, it's gonna stop you from going places. It couldn't be further from the truth. We have gone all over Australia with vans in tow, and I'm gonna demonstrate it today. When you don't need the van, what, 45 seconds? You unhook it, leave it right there, and today we're gonna to do that. We're gonna head off, gonna take the kids down and show them something real special. Pop the van back on, head back out again. The van doesn't impede you. It actually opens up opportunities. You go places and are so comfortable when you get there, you never wanna leave. Radio vans are unhooked, going to a lookout this morning, a lookout that I reckon very, very few people will ever have heard of, much less been to. And from all reports, she's an absolute stunner. But we'll see when we get there. The track we're on will take us to a point that overlooks the edge of a famous New South Wales wilderness, the Oxley Wild Rivers and a chance to check out the terrain we'll soon be navigating through. Soon, we make it to the summit of Mary's View, showcasing a drop of almost a kilometre down to the Maclay River. Holy! Wait till you see this. Wow! Jesus, that is impressive. That's insane! Check oh. this out! Look at that! Holy stinking ball, that is an incredible viewpoint. Well, have a go at that, Mary's view. Stunning, absolutely stunning. And it's very fitting too, because this puts us roughly halfway on our journey from Sydney through to Brisbane via the back blocks. Folks, this has been one of the most surprising trips I've done this year. I didn't really know what to expect, it's blowing me away, the campsites, the terrain, the driving, everything about it has been spectacular. The good news is we have got a long way to go yet. As for you folks, you'll have to wait because we're going to catch you next time on Off Grid. Next time on Off Grid, we uncover secret World War II ruins in the strangest place. You've got to see this one to believe it. Stumble on the best river camps we've seen in years, find a hidden crossing into Queensland and put the vans to the test as we continue our mission to Brisbane without touching the blacktop. Coming soon to Four Wheel Drive 24 seven.